Today, I just want to answer the basic question, what is an eye pattern on an oscilloscope screen? And we'll answer that question by taking a look at a couple of signals on this test board down here on the bench and uh, using them here on the scope to talk about what an eye pattern is. Now an eye pattern, which is this display here on channel 2, is a way of view viewing the quality of a serial bit stream and it does so by essentially laying a number of bits all on top of each other. So let me show you what I mean by that. All right, if we just uh, slow the uh, time base down on the scope here and do a single shot capture, what we can see is the high speed clock down here and the data pattern uh, right here. And uh, if we zoom in on this, we can actually see that uh, the bit pattern is lined up such that the data always transitions on the falling edge of a clock. In fact, we can do a quick little uh, search here and uh, maybe zoom in a little bit further. And if we uh, just move to each of the rising edges, we'll see that the rising edges of each of the clocks falls in the middle of a bit time. Okay, And the falling, all of the transitions always line up with the falling edge of the clock. So this kind of shows you the relationship Okay, of the clock and a serial bitstream so that if you're going to clock this serial data into a device you'd use the rising edge of that clock to you know, sample the data you know, into a latch or a flip-flop or something like that on the rising edge because you're right in the middle of the bit. Now of course to examine the quality of this bitstream with respect to the clock we could scroll through this memory and look at each bit, each rising edge, to be sure that the bit is nice and clean at each rising edge, but that would be wasteful and would take an awful lot of time. So an eye pattern gives us a way of doing that very easily. And let's show you how uh, the eye pattern is built up. So if I adjust the way the scope is triggering, I can show you how this eye pattern is built up. Go into the trigger menu and adjust the hold off to some large value, uh, let's say like one second. And so now the scope is only going to arm and trigger every second. And you can see that each time we trigger on the rising edge of this clock, that I'm basically grabbing pulses at a different point in time. There's a little bit of persistence turned on here, so you can see the waveform kind of fade away as the next one pops up here. Uh, but you can kind of get the idea now each time I trigger, I'm going to grab different sequences within the bit pattern. If we just simply turn the persistence up here, let's go grab the persistence and turn that up, we can essentially leave those waveforms on the screen longer and we're effectively building up the eye pattern. Over time, essentially all of the rising and falling edges and all the uh, rising and falling bit times or you know, the 0 and 1 levels will all fill in. And that's essentially how an eye pattern is built up. If I go back to the trigger menu here and I change the hold off back to its minimum value and uh, we'll just go set the persistence time back to auto we can see that that's really what this eye pattern is built up as. If I hit the single button, I can kind of see the same thing. Each time I do a single trigger, I'm grabbing different bits at different points in time. So when running kind of at full speed, all those bits lay on top of each other, and that's what creates the eye pattern. So what is that eye pattern good for? What's it telling us? So the eye pattern tells us a couple of things. It tells us you know, how open the eye is, and that's really how big of a clear area do I have in the center of each of these bits. The bigger the opening, this eye pattern is nearly ideal. The bigger the opening like we have here, the easier it is to set up a sample clock in the middle of that bit to sample the data. If there was a lot of noise on the zero or one level, that might affect our quality or our ability to clock that signal reliably into the next circuit. Or if there was a lot of jitter, in the edge positions or a really slow rise or fall time in these edge positions that might affect our ability to position this clock in the right spot. In this particular case this is kind of an ideal looking eye pattern with an ideal looking clock. So for illustration purposes I moved my channel 1 uh, probe uh, that I'm using for a trigger source to a different point on the board uh, to a point that's less stable and so that uh, we can see now that the eye pattern is a little less stable. I still have nice clean rails, 0 and 1 rails, but my rise and falling edges are now jittering around. 
zoom in a little bit you can see that a little bit better these edges are all kind of jittering around instead of being perfectly lined on top of each other and we call that horizontal eye closure and what it does is it makes the kind of valid bit time narrower so if I want to sample this high-speed data pattern you know that I have here into a latch I need to be more precise in where the clock edge is that's clocking that data into that latch or flip-flop. So that's one figure of merit. You know, the cleaner the eye pattern is, you know, in terms of the rising and falling edges laying on top of each other, the easier it is to sample that data and put it into a latch in a circuit. So that's one figure of merit uh, for an eye pattern. So in addition to horizontal eye closure as a figure of merit, Another figure of merit for a good eye pattern is the vertical eye opening. And here it's about as good as it gets. You know, the one, the zero, and one levels are perfectly flat. Now, if I do things to intentionally mess things up, like I, I pull my ground lead off, I see I got a little bit of ringing now here on the rising and falling edges. If I uh, kind of put my fingers all over this thing, I can cause a little bit of droop in the waveform and start degrading that eye pattern. It's still you know, a pretty good looking eye pattern here, but you can see how I, as I made these you know, kind of distortions in the signal that the vertical uh, you know, distance or voltage between a zero and one has now changed. So obviously th then this means that I need to be careful also about where I sample uh, that data to ensure that I've got enough voltage to properly be detected as a one or a zero. So those two effects, um, essentially horizontal eye closure, which is really uh, you know, caused by jitter, and vertical eye closure, which is typically caused by signal integrity issues, reflections, terminations, other noise, ground bounce, other issues like that. Uh, those two things can degrade essentially the amplitude of the signal through a bit time, or the timing, the edges of the rising and falling edges with respect to a clock that we might want to used to clock that data into a system. So the eye pattern can tell us an awful lot about the quality of a signal that we need to clock in. Now all of this time I've been using a clock signal uh, that I'm probing on channel 1 here as my trigger source. And often that's typically what you want to do to evaluate the quality of an eye pattern. You want to use the clock that's going to be the reference or the signal that's used to clock that signal into uh, some kind of a device. Sometimes this clock might be derived from that signal using a clock recovery circuit. In that case you'd want to you know, trigger on that, that clock. But, uh, and sometimes you don't have a clock at all. So what happens in that case you might choose to trigger on the rising or falling edge of the data itself. And you can do that and we, sometimes we call that a poor man's eye because what will happen is whatever you trigger on essentially becomes very stable. So uh, when we looked at the jittered eye, it looked like every edge was jittered. But if I was triggering on the data pattern itself, that rising edge or that falling edge would always be fixed. So all of the jitter that might be on that you know, in reality compared to say a clock signal is all going to be transferred to the next edge and that's going to look twice as wide. So ideally you want to use a clock, a recovered clock, or a system clock that's going to be used to latch that data as your trigger source to look at the eye pattern. So in summary, you know, the eye pattern, again, this very ideal eye pattern shows us that I've got very clean 0 and 1 levels, very clean rising and falling transitions. This eye is as open as it can possibly be. This is really kind of an ideal eye pattern. When you start getting up higher in speeds, oftentimes the rising and falling edges will start encroaching into the eye, closing the eye. You'll get jitter on the edges that'll close the eye. And you might get ringing, distortion, droop, etc. Uh, overshoot and undershoot on the, after the rising and falling edges that'll close the eye vertically. So the eye pattern ultimately can tell you an awful lot about the quality of that signal and the ability to recover that uh, and latch that signal in at the far end. Also, there are some standards that might use something other than just a simple 1 and 0 for signaling. It might be a 2 or 3 level signal, or 4 level signal, things like that. So the eye pattern can start looking like it's got you know, other uh, patterns and things like that in it. Uh, oftentimes, uh, for things like hard disk drives and CD players and things like that, uh, the data is such that the rising and falling edges are pretty slow. 
and you get a lot of what's called intersymbol interference, where you don't really have a rising or falling edge that finishes before the next bit time comes along. And, uh, but the encoding that's used can extract all of that out. Uh, so the eye pattern will often look like you know, a bunch of uh, you know, these rising edges kind of laying on top of it, sometimes coming back down before it went all the way to, to, to the full level, etc. But uh, each of these particular standards and types, if you're going to be servicing it or something like that, will often have a picture of what the eye pattern ought to look like. And in all of those cases, the eye pattern is essentially built up by taking multiple you know, data transitions and uh, bit times and laying them all on top of each other, displaying them all so you can kind of look through that pattern and look at overall timing and um, timing accuracy and amplitude accuracy for that signal. So I hope uh, you got something out of this and learned a little bit about what eye patterns are and uh, what you can learn from them. Thanks again for watching.